So Jesus Christ couldn't tolerate it anymore. So he says, He says, I speak openly to the world. No secret doctrines with him. Openly to the world. I ever thought in the temple and in the synagogue, whither the Jews always gather, in, in secret have I said nothing that you can implicate me. Nothing. I'll never preach anything in secret which I was not prepared to preach in public. In that case, you would have had hundreds of witnesses to testify against me. But you're getting witnesses and they're all false. They can't even tell it in the concocted evidence. The argument that Jesus was putting forth was so potent. That what are you trying to do? So the officer who was standing by slapped him in the face. Shut him up. What they call the third degree. You know the third degree? Biko had it. Biko. Our Imam had it. Imam Abdullah Harun. Third degree. You call it the third degree. You hit the fellow and hit the fellow till the poor man gives up. Third degree. So they slapped him in the face. Did that silence him? Ask our Christian brethren. Did that silence him? No. No. He says, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? What are you hitting me for? Remember that. How he spoke back, defended himself against the Sanhedrin. That you people are concocting things and this is very unfair, unjust. And now you, you're trying to apply the third degree, hitting me to silence me. What's wrong with you? Is this, is this Jewish law or any law, any sane law, civilized law, doing things like that? But they were intent on doing away with the man because they had decided even beforehand that it was expedient that one man die for the nation. This man, young man, very enthusiastic, he's got a big following. He can create turmoil in the, in the community. And in that case, there will be an insurrection and the Romans will come back with a clamping down upon us and kill our Jews. Rather, we kill this one fellow and save the nation. So it is expedient, not right or wrong. It is expedient that one man die for the nation. They had already decided upon that. Hook or by crook. So they said, art thou the Christ, the son of the living God? And he was the Christ. He was the Messiah. Son of the living God, it was a very innocent Jewish expression. God has got sons by the tons in the Bible. At question time, you may ask me and I'll give them to you. Like that. Sons by the tons. T-O-N is tons. In the Bible. So he says, yes. So they says, now his blasphemy is made kufar. What need of we for any further evidence? And he starts tearing his clothes. This is to demonstrate that, look, he's made kufar. Blasphemy. Kill him. But they had no power, they say. So they take him to the Roman governor next morning. When they take him there, they change the charge. You see, they said, look, this guy. To them, I mean, internally, they said, look, this guy's blaspheming, making kufar. For that, he deserves death. He's Christ, meaning God. Son of God, meaning God. Which meant nothing like that. In the language, it didn't mean that. But if you are looking for trouble, this is, you don't have to go very far. In any innocent expression, you can find false. And they found that. It's right. But now they can't kill him. So they take him to Pilate, the Roman governor, and they can't tell him this man has made kufar, blasphemy. Because to him it's joke. He had his man gods beyond counting. So another man god of the Jews, so what? So they say, no, he's claiming to be Christ, a king. Now they would change the word Christ to mean a king. To them, he said, Christ means a God. It's Kufar. Now to Pilate, they say, he's claiming to be Christ, a king. So Pontius Pilate questions Jesus. He says, are thou the king of the Jews? Are you? Are you the king? He says, thou sayest. That's what you say. I didn't make any such claims. And when he's pressed further, he says, May konikreik is ni van hirdi world ni. My kingdom is not of this world. May Connie Craig is needy, here the world need. In other words, mine is a spiritual kingdom. So to Pilate, he said, look, the guy may be mad. He's not right in his head. But he's not a danger to the state. So he comes forward and says, I find no fault in the man at all. He's innocent of what you people are charging him. He's an innocent man. 
So they say, if you let this man go, you are not a friend of Caesar. In other words, we will complain to Rome. said, you allow people like this to carry on, and one day if he creates trouble, he said, look, you were warned. So Pilate is blackmailed into giving in to the Jews. But in his heart and mind, the man is innocent. He said, I find no fault in the man at all. His wife had seen a dream says the scripture, in which she was told that no harm should come to this just man. She had sent a message to her husband and said, look, don't do anything wrong with this man. He's a good man. On account of him, I had so many things happening to me. See to it. Pilate is innocent. But what is he to do? He's weak. Jesus said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Human beings are like that. We know where the right is, but sometimes we give in. So Pilate gave in. Now, our learned Christian brethren, the preachers, they tell us that Jesus was led to the slaughter like a lamb, like a sheep before the shearer is dumb. He opened not his mouth. He had said, Mondani uop hamakni. He had said, Mondani uop hamakni. He opened not his mouth. He opened not his mouth. I'm asking, how did he speak? Ask them. When they tell you he didn't open his mouth, he was led like a sheep before his shearer is dumb. Like a lamb, he's going to a follower. And they slaughtered him and he didn't open his mouth. Ask them, how did he say, I have, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? How did the words come out? From his head? Where did the words come from? He didn't open his mouth. Is the mouth shut? Was he a ventriloquist? You know ventriloquist? Charlie McCarthy and his doll? You know, he makes the doll to say something, but he's uttering voice from his throat and we think is that doll is talking. Ventriloquism. Look, we believe that he gave life to the dead, Jesus Christ, by God's permission. He healed the blind and the lepers by God's permission. But I'm not prepared to believe that he was a ventriloquist. He was throwing his voice from underneath and, you know, with his mouth closed and he was making people to think that they're hearing voices coming from other way, other side. He said, and he opened not his mouth before Pontius Pilate. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Where did the words come from? He said, he opened not his mouth. You know, amazing thing. These born again Christians, a fellow, a lawyer by profession, he writes a book, born again, he's born again, and he's a lawyer. He writes a book in which he says, I'm quoting, he says, Isaiah predicts about Jesus Christ. One, he quotes, he would not defend himself at his trial. He would not defend himself at his trial. And in bracket, Jesus did not. In inverted commas, he opened not his mouth. These are lawyers, trained lawyers, professional lawyers, born again Christians with the spirit in them. And they, they write these things. He opened not his mouth. I says, please tell us, how did he speak? How do people, how did he say after this word? Before God is crying, so, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Did he utter those words? Trial and tribulation. Before Sanhedrin, did he speak? He did. Why did the guy slap him? Because it was very potent defense he was putting up. What did Pilate say? Why did he say, I find no fault with the man? Because he put up a beautiful defense. My kingdom is not of this world. But, you know, I don't know how to reason with these people. I don't know. You'll find very great difficulty. With this type of sickness, when the guy comes along to your house, I tell you, it's, it's useless. Please tell them. When you meet the ignorant one, you say, peace, salam. Then you say, to you, your religion, and to me, mine. You go your way, I go my way. Sick people. You don't talk to sick people. But they are all not sick. Allah says, testifies in the Quran, among them, the Jews and the Christians, there are good people. Allah says so. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. So there are two different ways of dealing with them. I have given you those booklets. It deals with how to deal with the type who comes along, you know, with a sickness, then you must know how to get the sickness out of